You're watching From the Heart with John Willard. Hi friends, John Willard here. We have another great show for you. And if you could be so kind to hit the subscribe button down below for CNA TV. The old gentleman poet would be mighty appreciative. My opening thought. You can give without loving, but you can't love without giving. Two people had adjoining farms. One raised wheat and had children and large dogs. The other raised sheep. The sheep farmer was in a quandary because the dogs next door were running into his pastures, frightening the sheep. He spoke to his neighbor, but the forays continued. He thought about taking the neighbor to court. He even thought about poisoning the dogs. Hmm. But then one day he found a solution. Some new lambs were born, and the sheep farmer gave each of his neighbor's children a lamb as a pet. They were delighted. Because of the pet lambs, the father could no longer let the dogs run amok. He restrained them and taught them to leave the lambs and sheep alone and everybody lived happily ever after. <laughs> 10 suggestions for getting along better with people. Guard your tongue. Say less than you think. Make promises sparingly. Keep them faithfully. Never let an opportunity pass to say a kind word. Be interested in others, their pursuits, work, families. Be cheerful. Don't dwell on minor aches and small disappointments. Keep an open mind. Discuss, but don't argue. Disagree without being disagreeable. Discourage gossip. It's destructive. Be careful of others' feelings. Pay no attention to ill-natured remarks about you. Live so that nobody will believe them. Don't be anxious about getting credit. Just do your best and be patient. A woman lived with her husband and two children in a very small hut. Then her husband's parents lost their home and she had to take them into hers. The coughing of the old folks and the crowding were unbearable. In desperation, she went to the village wise man whom she knew had solved many, many problems. What should I do? She begged. Do you have a cow? Asked the wise man. Yes, she replied. Then bring her into the hut too. And come back and see me in a week, said the wise man. A week later, she was back. This is unbearable, she said. Do you have any chickens? Asked the wise man. Yes, she replied. What about them? Bring them in the hut too, he said. Then come back and see me in another week. You're utterly out of your mind, she said. Nevertheless, Still awed by his reputation, she did as he asked. A week later, she returned. This is absolutely impossible, 
she said. Our home is a mess of chicken feathers, cow dung, and people. All right, said the wise man. Take out the chickens. Next week, she reported that without the chickens, it was definitely better. But still, a miserable situation. All right, said the wise man. Now take out the cow. That will settle your problem. And it did. Without the chickens and cow to contend with. The woman, her husband, the children, and his two parents got along quite peacefully. Everything you see is relative. Sometimes we don't know how well off we really are. Thomas Jefferson was a man of exceptional ability. But there have been many other people with as much or more ability who never received the acclaim the world gave to this man. The reason is that Jefferson had more than ability. He had the gift of being able to see how he could please others, and he pleased them. How did he exert so much charm over everyone who met him? Even those who had doubts about him, who even disliked him and opposed him on occasion, became his friends. Why? The answer is simple. He made everyone feel important. When he was president, Mrs. Samuel Harrison Smith wrote something that gives us an illuminating example of how he accomplished this. He gave everyone an opportunity of talking, she said. I recollect at one dinner there was a man who was silent and neglected. To him, the president said, we are indebted to you, Mr. Collins. No one deserves more gratitude of the country. He then described a very minor contribution Mr. Collins had made. Every eye turned to the guest, who honestly looked more astonished than anyone else in the room. He had been a mere cipher before. Now he had become a person of importance. It's such a simple idea and one that all of us can use every day in our contact with others. All of us meet men and women daily who are starving for attention yearning for importance. Give it to them and you'll win friends. My closing thought, of all the dear sights in the world, nothing is so beautiful as a child when it is giving something, any small thing it gives. A child gives the world to you it opens the world to you as if it were a book you'd never been able to read. But when a gift must be found, it is always some absurd little thing, pasted on crooked, <laughs> maybe an angel looking like a clown. A child has so little that it can give because it never knows it has given you everything. You can reach me on Twitter at John Willard 47. And just to let you know, I'll be speaking tomorrow morning 
at the CNA Fest at Little Rock in support of our wonderful CNAs. This is John Willard from the phone.